Hello, welcome to everything you wanted to know about Yamaha CLP735, but were afraid to ask. If you've clicked on this video, you may well have some questions about the Yamaha CLP735 that we see here, the answers to which you may not be able to find in the brochures or in the demonstration videos, but here at ePianos, it's our job to try and answer those questions for you. We'll do our best anyway. Let's get started. At ePianos, our mission is to bring the showroom to you. Our expert advice comes from years of experience in the industry. We've got the embarrassing photos to prove it. Check out our website for new and pre-owned digital pianos and keyboard offers and sign up for our free newsletter for exclusive deals, voucher codes and more content like this. Will I need to get this piano tuned? So there are no strings in these pianos to go out of tune. So you will never ever need to get your Yamaha CLP735 or any Yamaha Clavinova piano tuned. Uh, do see my video where I go into some depth about this. Um, and also the tuning that you uh, see referred to in the manual, uh, that is because you can deliberately detune these pianos slightly if you want to. Um, but that's only for the purpose of say matching other instruments in orchestras like ancient Stradivarius violins or cellos or things like that. But for 99.9999% of people, there's no need to do that. You turn the piano on, it'll be in perfect tune. You're never gonna to have to call the tuner out. It will never go out of tune. There are no strings in there to be able to go out of tune. So no, you will never um, have to get this piano tuned. Does it feel like a real piano to play? So it's a very common question, this one, is does the CLP735, or any Clavinova for that matter, feel like a traditional piano to play? Um, some people have got a bit of a perception of um, a preconception of digital pianos that they somehow feel like that old keyboard you got for Christmas in 1986 with the soft spongy keys. Well, things have moved on a great deal since then. And now the keys themselves, when you play them, are virtually identical to playing the real thing. It's actually very different, um, very difficult rather, to tell the difference between playing a traditional piano and playing a digital piano now. They actually have a fully weighted key mechanism in there, so there's real resistance to the key. Yamaha pioneers with this. They're really leading the whole industry with the way they get a very authentic feel of the keys here. Um, it's not something you can see in a video. Of course, you'll have to come and try one, but to all intents and purposes, it feels the same as a real traditional piano. Is it heavy? So the weight of this piano is uh, 57 kilograms or 125 pounds, 11 ounces to be precise. So in comparison to a traditional piano, uh, no, it's not heavy. In fact, that's one of the reasons that these are becoming so uh, popular is they don't weigh very much. You can move them around the home. Um, in traditional pianos, you have big iron frames within them and lots of um, different components which make them heavy. Digital pianos don't have to be so tall because they don't have to encompass the iron frame in there, but with no iron frame and no strings, it's not a very heavy instrument. In fact, here I am, average size, average build, and I can pick up one end with one hand like that. I find I can move them around the showroom rather easily, being very, very careful, of course. So compared to a traditional piano, no, they're not very heavy at all. You should be able to move it around your house okay. Getting it upstairs, you probably need one person on each end, but the answer is no, they're not very heavy. How does it come when it's delivered? So when this piano is delivered to your home, it's going to come in a flat packed box, quite a large box, um, very safely, I should mention. I've never ever seen one of these pianos arrive at uh, our customers' houses and have any damage with them whatsoever. Yamaha take this very, very seriously. Um, it does require some basic assembly, and I really, really do mean basic, because the main part of the piano here, the top section in the box, is actually already built. So when you unbox it, you'll find that that whole section there is already one piece. Um, it is only the feet, either side, and the bottom bits that you need to um, put together. Very, very easily done. Uh, you just attach the feet there, and as for um, cables, I'll cover that in the next bit, but generally it turns up in a, a large box and you assemble it yourself. Very easy to do, 99% of people choose to do that, 
and it's very easy to put together. Are there lots of complicated cables to plug in? Uh, no, absolutely not. There are only two cables to plug in. And I want to show this to you. If you follow me around this way, please, um, I can show you that the two cables, when you're constructing this piano, one of which simply connects the top of the piano to the pedal unit, and there's only one place that it can be plugged in. So this is the cable. You can't go wrong. There's only one socket that will take this underneath here. Um, the other cable is the one that goes to the mains. That's this one over here. So it's just a standard um, cable like that. Only one socket it can go into, and it goes out into the mains just there with its own power adapter. Uh, so no complicated cables, very, very easy to put together um, once you've constructed the piano, only two cables, really easy. Does it have a dust cover? Um, a perfectly sensible question and the answer is yes and no. Let me show you. Come this way. So over the keys themselves, there is this. Pull it out just like that and on these sliders comes a lid to the piano and that covers the keys, keeps the dust off of the keys. There's no overall dust cover that you might use a cloth or something like that, um, but for a dust cover for the keys, yes, it's got one built into the lid. It's nice and sturdy, it's quite weighted, so when it's down, it's down, and when it's up, it's firmly tucked away. Can I control the volume? Yes, this is another reason why digital pianos are becoming really, really popular. Uh, unlike traditional pianos, you have a lot of ways you can control the volume. You haven't just got one set volume. Um, over here, there is a slider, a volume slider. Come this way. Have a look here. Um, you can turn it all the way up, all the way down. There's no correct volume. Uh, it's really just as loud as you can get away with it until the neighbors complain. Um, so yes, you can control the volume, uh, which leads me to our next question, which is, can I use headphones with this piano? Uh, yes, you can use headphones with this piano. That's a pretty standard thing these days. And for clarity, when you plug the headphones into this piano, the main speakers of the piano will cut. So nobody can hear you playing except you with your earphones on. Um, quite nicely, Yamaha have put Come this way, underneath the piano. This is where you plug the headphones in, by the way. A couple of nice things I like down here. One is that there is a little hook here for you to dangle your headphones from when they're not being used. And you have not one, but two sockets to plug headphones into. So two people can now sit and duet while they play and nobody else can hear them playing. You may have noticed down there also that the sockets are quarter inch jack. So just beware that your old iPhone headphones with the little jack are not going to fit into that. You need an adapter to make the jack larger. But here at ePianos, of course, that's something we do as standard. Every piano that we deliver with headphones will come with the correct size of headphone adapter. Why is the polished ebony finish more expensive? Now you've probably noticed there is a, a price difference between the matte finishes of this model and the polished ebony finish of approximately three, four hundred pounds. Uh, the finish itself, of course, is just a cosmetic thing. It doesn't add any features whatsoever. Um, but the polished ebony finish really, really does look quite striking as a piece of furniture. And uh, I want to do a bit of a time warp here and go back to a video I made where I explained the differences and got up really close with a polished ebony finish. Here we go. And this is one shiny finish, isn't it? Oh, look, it's me. Um, incidentally, the finish, <clears throat> polished ebony finish, important detail I want to show you about this is look at the edges of it. Do you notice you cannot see a join on the edges here? Um, it's totally smooth. This is 52 layers of polished lacquer and this is why it costs a little bit more you've probably noticed in the CLP models that you do pay somewhere in the region of three to four hundred pounds extra having a polished finish rather than the uh, matte finish there's a matte black which behind me I've got 
the little brother, the CSB150, which has the veneer on it. And you can see the join, look, if you look closely. Now, it's still a really nice finish, granted, and, and certainly from a distance it looks great. But the reason it's cheaper is because obviously they've, they've saved cost somewhat by using a veneer. But it's still joined fairly well, but it's pretty clear, isn't it? You can see that there's a join on there. But on the 170, the polished ebony finish, you can see it's a lovely, smooth, no join finish that extends for the whole piano. Where do I put my music book? OK, so for your music book, come up here. There is this, a music rest. And come really up close to it, please, and have a quick look around that while I just go and get my music book to demonstrate to you. What we have there is a music rest angled backwards which allows you to put your music book up here like this and come even closer and have a look to stop the book closing if it's a big one you have these music clips just here. So that should stop any large books closing like that. So that is where you put your music book. Um, also worth noticing that you can lay this down flat as well. If you look at the back of it, you'll see that we've got these little flaps here. And you can put those up, tip the lid down and have it flat like that to put a laptop on or a plant pot or not a cup of tea. They never ever put liquids on these, by the way, I should mention. It's the worst thing you could do in case you spill anything on it, but that's where you put your music book. What do the three pedals do? I'll show you. Come on down here and have a look. Um, three pedals on here, uh, exactly the same configuration as you'd find on a concert grand piano. Uh, and that is very, very important if you're attempting the higher grades. The most commonly used one is the right hand or right foot pedal, perhaps. Uh, called the sustain pedal. That just allows the strings to resonate and ring out for a longer time. Um, all this is done virtually on a digital piano, I should mention, because of course there are no strings on there, as we've mentioned. The middle pedal is called the sostenuto, and it does almost the same thing, but just with selected keys. And the uh, left hand pedal down here, um, well, that operates the clutch and allows you to change gear. <laughs> I think I'm going to insert some uh, audience laughter there. Uh, no, not really. Of course, it's called the soft pedal or the one chord pedal, and it subtly changes the tone of the piano, uh, generally to make it a bit quieter, but very rarely used. In fact, I hardly ever use uh, the left hand pedal. Most pianists only ever use the sustain pedal on the right hand side. Uh, Chris, you didn't answer my question. Well, I'm sorry about that, um, but leave your comment or your question in the comment section below this video uh, and we'll do our best to make a video to cover it. Um, there are no silly questions whatsoever. Uh, that is what we're here for, to answer your questions. You can always get in touch with us via email, phone or live chat on our website. Um, we're here to help people just like you, so get in touch. Thanks for watching. Bye.